Welcome to Final 30 TV. This is our Saturday morning slot, the alternative to... Legend Sad. Has to be said every week. Soccer AM. Yes, yeah, we always forget it's the lesser of two evils, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Just because it's been around longer, we think, you know, like a bad family <laughs> is relative. Is there any other shit Saturday, night, or Saturday morning shows we can... It's like a growth, you've just sort of gotten used to in your balls, and just sort of there. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I'm... Don't don't leave it there. <laughs> yeah. Do address it at some point. <laughs> go see your go see your doctor. He's a he's a good man. Certainly don't laugh. He at knows his the truth. Yeah. But um, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so it, it, it's nostalgia of a sort this week because um, this actually all came from your rant. But uh, we'll get there in a second. But I'm basically, kind of we, you're kind of Kelly. This is Rob Palmer. I'm Rob Canavan. Sorry. But um, I wasn't the fi- I wasn't the singer in the the eighties. I'm a different one. It's fine. He's the other one. <laughs> yeah. We talked about ball growth. <laughs> but, um, we're gonna uh, we're gonna look at uh, the national broadcaster of Ireland, which is RTE Radio Television, and their coverage of soccer, as they call it, um, which is dreadful and has been dreadful for years. It's not funny; it never was either. Um, so yeah, this this started because you were watching the Manchester United Wolfsburg game, yes, yes, um, and their coverage of said game seemed to, well, just judging by your timeline, because I wasn't with you at the time, seemed to be um, angry. I would say angry is probably yeah. the most PC word I can think of for it. For a long, long time, I've debated what the worst broadcaster is mm. in terms of football coverage. There's a bag of them, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, there's a lot of yeah. them. TV3, another Irish broadcaster. Are, 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 could be great, but they're woeful. Yeah. Um, BT, uh, do some things great, do some things terribly. Sky are the exact same. They have two or three very, very good shows and then some awful, awful stuff. They've gotten rid of their probably best one in Revista that league. Yeah. Definitely their best one. Oh, definitely. definitely. Yeah. 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 I'd have Revista above MNF. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. sorry, Carl. But RTE are undoubtedly the worst, and that conclusion was definitively reached on Wednesday night when I watched the Manchester United most weekend. First of all, Darren Maloney, the host, presents the show as if it is a Manchester United fanzine or a Manchester United or Manchester United TV. Yeah. Basically. Another thing, just to add to your abuse, um, is that he also presents it if he's a pundit. Yeah, he's not like an anchor. Yeah, he's not like, he doesn't United separate the roles too, like yeah. Ed Chamberlain would. Who's a fantastic host? I think Ed Chamberlain is, is top of the pile, but that's that's a really really good point. He he does kind yeah. of try to be a pundit as well, and he's also a definitely a United fan too. Oh well, yeah, he's yeah. Irish and he's from Dublin, of course. Yeah, yeah. And he's, he's young enough not to have been Which, there when Liverpool were on top. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry, this is the problem. The broadcast starts off and he introduces it. Manchester United's latest Champions League match. So and then. It's basically, you know, Manchester United against other team from somewhere in Europe. Yeah. And they, they treat Wolfsburg as if, oh, well, that's some team that Manchester United are going to roll over yeah. easily. This uh, week's fodder. Yeah, well, so yeah. so they talk about it like that. And then when it's a halftime, it's 1-1 one, one and level. It's a, it's a surprise that Manchester United are trailing in, or mm. had trailed in the game at all. Um, it's as if they never watched yeah. Wolfsburg play. We should watch that. Right. Then, uh, that, uh, that. It just, you, as, as, you, as you say that, that brought me back to Liam Brady. The three pundits in RT, as we always know. As everybody, even in England, will probably know this right. John Giles, Liam Brady, Eamon Dunphy. Liam Brady was tasked with describing the Wolfsburg team and formation. He said, the first thing he says, I have to admit that I don't know an awful lot about Wolfsburg. Well, don't worry about that, Liam. They only finished second in the Bundesliga last year and won the German Cup. The, 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 They're basically coming out of provincial no one. Just, just discount that for a sec, right? Liam, right? Did you fly in courtesy of RTE this morning? Yes. Are you being paid a salary to work for RTE? Yes. Are you being paid a salary to cover Champions League football? That's true. Yes. Oh, no, 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 no. Are two teams playing? No, it's not Champions League football. It's Manchester United Champions Manchester League United football. Manchester United football. So there are yeah. two teams playing. Yeah. Four and 11. Which is one of the good things about Liverpool not being in the Champions League is because they can't, you know, dedicate week after week to Manchester United and Liverpool games. Mm. Even when, let's say, if City are playing Barcelona, they would still show Liverpool against Poznan. Oh, they would. Yeah. yeah no, they absolutely yeah. would. Yeah. Sure, what was it? Um, like, on the, the road to, what was it? Um, when Atleti and Real, yeah. when De- Real won the decima, it was like Atleti were playing, I think it was... Milan? Milan, yeah. It yeah, was a big Milan. enough game anyway. Yeah. Like, and... Um, they like to show an English game instead. It was, I remember that yeah. there was a lot of abuse of hipsters for watching yeah. oh, no, 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 the game. They played Barca in the quarterfinals. That was it, yeah. yeah. And they showed then they went to show um United Chelsea. and Bayern, wasn't it? No, it was Chelsea and someone else. Oh, Either way, yeah. Chelsea and someone who they were obviously gonna beat. Yeah. But like It's like that's the biggest game. If you're providing coverage of the Atleti Champions against Barcelona League. and Chelsea against someone who I can't even fucking remember. Mm. Like 
That's a joke. It, it, the worst part about it is for me when it, when it comes to covering these games is that if you, if you, everyone always uses the excuse, oh, majority of the audience would be United fans. True, absolutely true. But at the end of the day, it is a football game. Yeah. Surely you can watch it and kind of go, yeah, I would love to be really well informed about Wolfsburg. I really want to know what I'm going to be seeing tonight. Even Sky, right? When Sky had Champions League coverage and their Champions League coverage was great, they always did some sort of video package on the opponents. Mm. They went and interviewed, it could be a former player who played for an English yeah. club. Or they try to get a Andre Schurler, studio for well. example, for Wolfsburg. Yeah. Or, yeah, or they get, uh, yeah, they get uh, uh, somebody else into the studio. Um, or they do some sort of backstory on the club. Mm. and let you, Even if they're playing like a small club from provincial Europe, They'll let you know. Mm. They'll let you know who they are, where the town's from, their history, all that stuff. It's great. It's informative. But I think I, it's, I, the reason Irish Cup is worse as well is because we act as if the Premier League is our league. Yeah. That way, it is yeah. not our league. Yeah. That's called the League of Ireland, by the way, for yeah. viewers in England who don't know. Yeah. We actually do have a league. Yeah. So yeah. Bar- <laughs> the Barclays Premier League is not... It's not Ireland's league. So stop treating it like that. And nor are the teams. No matter how much you claim the Irish immigrants go there, no matter how much you claim the Irish priests set up the club, they're not Irish clubs. Yeah. It's not acceptable to justify yeah. liking them because of that. Uh, like them for different reasons if you yeah. want. Next point, of course, is the pundits themselves. And Can I just, just go back to the when you were talking about the video package? Or something that struck me about RT is that um, when we do our podcast for Champions League games, we get more interviews than RT do for their Champions League coverage. When, when have you ever yeah. seen an RT pre, like, pre-match show when they get an interview from even the United, like even an ex United player or something, yeah. unless like yeah. See, all p- it is is Dunphy, Giles, and Brady talking about their opinions on Manchester United. There is no outside influence on that show mm. at all. And it's it's uh, as well as that though the, the perception in Ireland in particular, I'm sure it's in England to a certain extent, is that you have to have played the game at the highest level. Yeah. But when when you're looking at a game with two teams from 2015, what use is your experience playing for Arsenal and Juventus? Yeah. it's of no benefit because Poor unless you're going to give personal insight into I wouldn't have done this you don't do this in a dressing room that's fine I do like professional insight into that but I would rather have a journalist who covers Wolfsburg talk about Wolfsburg you can have knowledge like pros you can have your Gary Neville's your Jamie Carriers even your own Hargreaves who was very good in BT you can have these guys because they have experience that is relevant now because yeah. they only played a couple of years ago and they're still involved in the game they still watch the game specifically Gary Neville the reason Gary Neville became a pundit in Sky was because he wanted to go and get outside the Manchester United bubble and watch football around Europe. Yeah, and I expect there was a bit of that as well. No, no, no. no. Well, <laughs> no I, that, with, with Neville, I don't think it was money. I think Neville was solely motivated by increasing his knowledge of the game because he, because one day he wanted to be a coach, but that changed halfway through when he realised he really, he really enjoyed TV. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Yeah, but but he wanted to broaden his horizons during, because he was inside the Manchester United bubble his whole career. Yeah. But like, you're yeah, right, Giles, Giles is a man either in his 70s or very, very close to his 70s. Oh, he's got to be in his 70s. Borderline dead. Yeah. That's what I'd say his age is. I, I was going to say senile, like, to be honest. Well, but, that, that comes yeah, with the package. Yeah. yeah, but he played for Leeds because a lot of viewers probably don't know who John Giles is. He played for Leeds <laughs> in the 1970s, the Don Revy team that won a couple of league titles and reached the European Cup final. Great player back then. But John Giles still covers football like it is in the 70s. Yeah. Hey, case in point, Juan Mata, who has been Probably Manchester United's one of Manchester United's best attacking players this season is a number ten. Yeah, I would say best. He's I he's playing at the moment in a in a right sided position, but he is number ten. Mm. But he can play out wide as well. John Giles says he's their best controlling player, so therefore he should be further back in the in the pitch. He's a central midfielder, so he should be receiving the ball off the back four and making the passes forward. Because you see, there's no zones in football. He also says tactics doesn't exist. Yeah, but the whole. Getting the ball to the back four, getting the back four to pass the central midfielder sounds a lot like a fucking tactic to me. Certainly an approach. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's not. A midfielder doesn't doesn't need tactics. A midfielder just needs the ball at his um, feet. Yeah, and seventy yards of space where any creative player can. Mm. can he also always it. makes the point that the reason you need. No, sorry, this was Ronnie Whelan, another dreadful pundit. Right. Made the point that you need to get the ball off centre house because they can't play. <laughs> Which is the uh, like. <laughs> Virgil van Dijk ran the pitch against Chelsea the weekend he's yeah. the centre half shut up Ronnie Whelan it's end of story maybe in some <laughs> cultures <clears throat> here yeah. centre halves can't play and are encouraged not to play there, there's a huge yeah. difference between not being able to play and never having been encouraged to play uh, uh, huge. Uh, I, remember, I remember from playing football that the philosophy over here is um, good play centre back believe it or not and um, the philosophy that we were taught 
was, if in doubt, put it out. Uh, Never try and play the ball out from yeah. the back. Just kick it out of play. And it's a quick grass game. It's always in doubt. Don't yeah. take the it's risk. Always yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, no, it's a quick grass game with pitches that were definitely ran on by horses or cows yeah, yeah. in the previous morning. Cars or something. Cars, yeah. 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 It's surreal. The boys, yeah. The, yeah. But yeah. Their coverage is general. And, and I remember, even outside of the Champions League, even covering international games, I remember when we played um, in Moscow, it was really, really good. Nil, nil, draw. Yeah. It's weird. That Richard sounds very good. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, that they start the game and Liam Brady, <laughs> fa- fancy that, turns around and goes, well, we don't know much about the Russian team. This is as the 11 is coming up on your screen, by the way, right? And straight away I looked at it and said, that's funny, the Berzitsky twins are playing. They played in the Champions League against Manchester United in that season. I'm for Cisco sure. Moscow. I used this line in a piece I wrote about Southampton today for you, Max, but basically the opponents to Manchester United or Liverpool or any English team in the Champions League are just nameless, faceless yeah. Silhouettes or players we want, yeah, in a bracket, you know, maybe yeah. watch them. Or oh, yeah, we know Pirlo from yeah. the Italian team. Well, <laughs> we're not for his 10 years of genius, like, yeah. fuck off. No, Pirlo only came to the, to the football team when he was 32 and he absolutely yeah. bossed game against England. He didn't exist before that. Never right. mind, Milan. Yeah. Like this is how this is how it's supposed to start, right? Brady, Brady is still involved in the game and he should know better. Um, because he still talks about how the Italian football is, is ruined and that they play negative, the negative style of football. The only Italian thing he watches is Juventus because he played for them. Mm. Um, now then, and then we come to Dunphy. Dunphy, who knows nothing about the game, is essentially there. <laughs> he uh, calls Ronaldo could, a cod. Yeah, you, you, as could in a fraud. That you could leave that sentence at Dunphy knows nothing yeah. about anything. No. Not just football. So anyway, yeah. Um, the very idea that the pundits are there, and they've been there since World Cup 78, I yeah. think I'm right to say. Well, apart from Brady, because he was playing. Uh, of course, yeah. He's the young one of the group, which yeah. you definitely wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah. But their, their coverage is awful. Um and it's, it's a rant that's been building just because it's so frustrating. I mean, in the last oh, yeah. World Cup, you'll have heard in our World Cup pods, I mean, we made up a player. Lorenzo from Argentina. I'm sure you all know Lorenzo, the, the, the great Argentine footballer. Never realised his potential because he doesn't fucking exist. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know. Exactly. He's, re- he's, real, uh, he's real twinkle toes. He's an pitch. unknown quantity. Yeah, he's an unknown, yeah, an unknown quantity. quantity. An yeah. unknown quantity because he's real as Tinkerbell. Yeah. Well, yeah. Peter Pan. Right, we, we were talking about Dunphy. Yeah. As you were saying, Dunphy essentially called Ronaldo a cod or a fraud. Mm. And for years, he had this agenda against Ronaldo. Despite Ronaldo being one of the best players in the world when he was at Manchester United and developing into the best player in the world at the time. Mm. And he still called him a cod. Yeah. And I think that that also served as an argument that football is dying. Oh, and yeah. And he also likes no to compare... Anymore. He also likes to two of the best ever. ever. Some ever. of the best teams, some of the best coaches. Yeah. Um, the best front facilities. Three. I mean, yeah. find me a better front three. Best, yeah, mm. best facilities, best coaching. Sick. We've got... It's like the Bundesliga, one of the best packages if you want to pay a decent amount yeah. to go, or if you want to pay a reasonable amount to go and see good yeah. football. It's a golden age of football. Remember, we talked about this with James Richardson in the, in the interview. It's a golden age of football. And not necessarily if you're a paying football. fan week yeah. in, week out. Maybe not, it's not a golden age because it's more expensive, but to watch football, yeah. it's never been better. No. I, I find it hard to they're better see anyone other than They're more that. professional, they're better athletes, yeah. the game is quicker. The game. There's, There's more technical, technical variants. There yeah. are more better players. There are more better teams. It's yeah. it just the standard overall is huge. You know, look at the Champions League, the European Cup back in the day. Some yeah. of the teams that were winning it and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Coming from nowhere. That's exciting in its own way, but the semi finals yeah. of the Champions League is just, whoa. you know, there are not many <laughs> players in Dunphy one right. place. Semi and yeah. juicy. Yeah, well, really yeah, one, last, well, uh, one last point of Dunphy. What Dunphy always does repetitively is he'll make a, a controversial statement. That he has no way of backing up, yeah. and then he'll try and humour his way out of it by saying, "Oh well, I, I think that Manchester United win because I have money on them." Yeah, uh, and that sort of nonsense. That's uh, about all he would know is what yeah. money he has on. And like, and then people laugh at him, and you know, balls. E put up. Uh, anyway, Dunphy's, Dunphy's best yeah, moment. Dunphy <laughs> said this tonight. It's like, yeah, yeah, he wh- did. Who yeah. cares? Well he did say that, yeah. Why? You, you why is he? Why? And and then you have people like people we respect, like on Twitter, even saying, "Oh, they still, you know, a lot of people still take, yeah. or still think their opinion is relevant. They're not relevant. It's better than that controlled debate on Sky and BBC because there is a certain amount of BBC yeah. when they covered games that they, you could tell it was controlled, but they still know players. Yeah, what I think, I think something that needs to be said about the RT thing is that a lot of people actually do genuinely see it as a as a as a as a entertainment tool yeah. not as a, an, yeah, an, an analysis yeah. of football like well, they see it as funny one, one guy uh, was working I can't remember how we know him so they said it was girlfriend's in law or something like that but she um, she, she was saying that she was talking to him and he, he was in work working with an English guy recently come over to live in Ireland he comes in after a weekend and kind of goes 
who are those two old men talking with John Giles on a Saturday? <laughs> Which just kind of hits the spot about where these people are. Because, like, yeah. you know, Liam Brady's best years and then, were in yeah, Italy, like, but, you know, still. And, like, stands. the one... The one bright spot in our team is Richie Sadier. A fantastic pundit who knows what he's talking about. He's measured. He's balanced. Seems to be widely hated. And he's widely hated. Because well. he's got common sense. Yeah. And he questions, like... The general narrative. Yeah, he he doesn't play, play at the highest level, he, and he doesn't swear on national television every yeah. five minutes. Or be drunk on TV. Yeah. Let's not get into the swearing thing because I swear a lot. Yeah, <laughs> but we did, we did have as we did have a thing during our World Cup podcast of Eamon Dunphy uh, jumping in with swear words from nowhere. Yeah. Oh, and also basically uh, saying Neymar was overrated despite. Liam Brady reading out the fact that he's got like close to 50 international yeah. goals. <laughs> well, their coverage is ridiculous anyway. I think that is that a wrap for, for, crap. for yeah. the rant? Yeah, yeah it's useless and it's not. It's never going to get better, let's be honest. Those guys are going to live for a good few years. They have the money to. Um, so yeah, leave your comments in the section below if you also hate RT or if you maybe defend it because you think it's funny. Which... But anyway, leave your comments. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube and follow uh, on Twitter at the, at the final underscore third. And thanks for watching.